Football Fitness Series week. Today we'll talk about concrete cardio. Tomorrow we'll talk about strength training. Uh, and Wednesday we have uh, a focus on flexibility. And then Thursday and Friday are more game planning days, time spent to really figure out what you could do back home, any questions that you have, or um, just really time to goal set. But today I have, th I have three goals for you today to empower you in defeating three common excuses when it comes to exercise. Specifically, I don't have time. Has anyone ever said that before? I'm sure we all have, right? Um, I can't do high intensity. Has anyone ever said that before? Okay, or it's too hard. Have you ever said that before? It's too hard, I can't do it. So I hope today that I, have, I will have provided you with strategies on overcoming these three excuses. But before I do that, I want to talk about what it means, what cardio means. So cardiorespiratory fitness, simply put, is your heart and lungs ability to deliver oxygen to your working muscles. How efficient is your body, is your heart, at sending your body what it needs to function properly? So some startling facts. In 2005, 56% of all deaths in the US were from heart disease. 32% of those deaths occurred prematurely, before the age of 75. In 1900, heart disease has been the number one killer, except for the year 1918. Does anybody know what happened in 1918? What happened? The common flu. It was just the common flu. Influenza. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it was a huge influenza epidemic. And then, Nearly 2,400 Americans every year pass from heart disease. Okay. It's the equivalent of every 36 seconds, someone going. If all forms were eliminated, life expectancy overall as a population would increase by about seven more years. Just to give you an idea of how things have progressed over time, the, on the left we have 1994, and on the right over here, 2010. The darker colors indicate a larger percentage of the population having obesity and diabetes, two huge risk factors for heart disease. As you can see, it's becoming darker and darker. And then we also have this one of 2014, if you're interested in seeing that as well. It continues to get darker. Luckily, there's three simple things that you can do to decrease your chances of all those things. So simply put, sit less, move more, and promote behavior change. That doesn't sound so bad, right? <laughs> so sit less, right? Maybe you get a standing desk at work or something like that, right? Maybe it, it'll encourage you to be more likely to move around. Having said that, um, standing alone isn't enough. You must still move, so standing desk will make a small dent, but maybe not a big change. Okay, move more, so some simple tips. Maybe take more frequent bathroom breaks. Drink more water so that you need to use the bathroom more often and stay hydrated. Maybe you walk to a coworker's office instead of calling or emailing. Maybe you park further away so you have to walk more steps. Maybe take a short walk at lunch. But then promote behavior change, how do you do that? Maybe we, have any of you ever been on a weight loss plan before? Yeah, <laughs> right? And maybe it works during the plan, but maybe not after. Maybe it didn't actually create behavior change. Was that the case? So how do you yeah. do that? What if I told you there was a pill you could take, a magic pill that you could swallow that would create behavior change? Would you swallow that pill? Many times. Many times you would? Well, I mean, like, many different, you know, there, there's so many products out there. You know, oh, this is the number one weight loss thing. I know. And Dr. Oz, I mean, <laughs> they, 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 if you look on the website, it's like, oh, this is so new thing. And then you scroll down, it's the same advertisement. It's just they need a different picture and a different product. And I'm like, why can't people understand that they're just, it doesn't, nothing's going to work? Yeah. Oh, uh, no. It never works. And there's, there's always those articles, what are, what is Brad Pitt using? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. what is Angelina Jolie yeah. doing? How did the rock look the way he looks? <laughs> Use the supplement. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, what if I told you that a certain amount of exercise, it could actually be your medicine? Mm -hmm. 
Would you still swallow that pill? Well, yeah, I mean, really, exercise and wanting to eat, that's basically what it is. Yeah, simply put, right? Yeah, that's all you need. Just exercise and watch what you eat, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you gotta do. Okay, so when I think about medicine or or any, any type of goals, I always think of what are the desired outcomes of what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. And in this case, I'm thinking heart health, weight loss, and long-term success. Is, are those three things something that you all desire? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Heart health, weight loss, long-term success. So if those are the three desired outcomes we're focusing on right now, then what is the prescription? What is gonna be the best way to create my behavior change that will also give me weight loss and heart health? So I actually recently went to um, an American College of Sports Medicine conference, which is, they're considered the gold standard when it comes to um, health and fitness for the average population and sports performance. And there was a really cool keynote speaker. His name was Dr. John, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Jake Kick or Jake Kasik, <laughs> something like that. And his, his research is actually on this, heart health and brain plasticity, behavior change. And this was a really interesting study that he did. He had three different groups. One group did 150 minutes or more exercise a week at a moderate to high intensity. And that's the blue line here. And for this study, they did not change their diet at all. So this was not enough exercise to create a significant amount of weight loss or behavior change if their diet wasn't changed. Then he had another group 280 minutes a week of mixed high intensity and low intensity. And that's this red line here. So as you can see, this group did lose some weight. And then there was this group here who did 280 minutes a week of all high intensity. And this group lost the most amount of weight, but after a year and a half, their behaviors went back. It did not promote behavior change. So of these three, the, ones that, the one that promoted behavior change was actually the mixed high intensity with also low intensity. They lost a significant amount of weight and they were able to also change their behavior after 18 months. So the breakdown was 280 minutes a week, 40% high intensity, 60% low intensity. Whoa, that sounds like a lot. Does that sound like a lot of time? 280 minutes a week? <laughs> no, okay, that's exciting. That's a great question. <laughs> this breaks down to, on a five day week, about 56 minutes a day. Okay, that's an hour a day. That's not bad, huh? An hour. Which also breaks down to about 20 minutes high intensity, 30 minutes at a leisurely intensity. That's not too bad. So then this same guy also decided, what's the deal with this 10,000 steps? Let's look, take a look at that. Have any of you heard of this 10,000 steps deal before? Is there any trick to this? So he then took three groups again. One group did um, 30 minutes of high intensity all at once, and then the rest of their day was their leisurely intensity. And then he took another group and did two 15 minute bouts of high intensity throughout the day. And then he took another group and did three 10 minute bouts. So he wanted to know, is there a difference? And all of these at the end of the day added up to 10,000 steps. I want to know, is there a difference, one better than the other? And when it comes to behavior change, he found that there is actually a difference. There is one that actually promoted behavior change more than the other. And that was these three 10 minute bouts of high intensity exercise. So just three times a day for 10 minutes at high intensity, this is your medicine, was more likely to promote behavior change than having one workout in your day that was a longer time. They found that it was the most effective insulin stabilizing, so that's really great for diabetic purposes. Most effective long-term weight loss, promoted left ventricle efficiency, which simply put is heart health. And for 18 months or longer, these people were continuing to be successful in their journey. So if you're interested in knowing the breakdown of steps, what, what does that mean? If you use that as a measure for yourself, on average, it added up to about 6,000 steps of like a leisurely going for a walk and then 4,000 steps at a power walk pace. If that's not enough, there's another 
research article that I stumbled upon. Um, from McMaster University, found that a single minute of very intense exercise produced health benefits similar to longer traditional endurance training of 45 minutes. Does that sound pretty exciting? Just one minute of high intensity? So th what this broke down to, though, was this was a 12-week program, and the workout itself was 10 minutes. Um, they did this three days a week. They did a two-minute warm-up, and then three rounds of 20-second all-out sprints. So that added up to one minute of just high, high intensity. There was a two minute rest between these sprints and a three minute cool down. And this has the same results as someone who was, health results, I should say, not, maybe not performance results, but health results, as someone who trained 45 minutes a day. Are you sure you don't have time? <laughs> Does that sound a lot easier than what you thought before? Mm -hmm. Cool. Kind of what we did today. Kind of what we did today, yeah, exactly, this morning. Okay, so what does high intensity mean? Um, I think oftentimes some people will confuse high intensity for high impact. Mm -hmm. So high intensity simply means it increases your heart rate. Large muscles are involved, so like your legs, your chest, your back. Your feeling of exhaustion comes sooner, typically. And it does not mean high impact. You could be, this, this is high impact, this is low, in, low impact, and these can both still be high intensity. So you could still get your high intensity dosage from just doing something like this. So I hope that this helps you to defeat that notion that I can't do high intensity. Does this help a little bit? Give you a better idea of intensity? Okay, so warning, there are some side effects of exercise. I will let you know that it does reduce the risk of developing and dying from heart disease. Um, it does lower your cholesterol. <laughs> it does reduce the risk of diabetes. It can reduce depression and anxiety. Just be mindful of that. Um, it increases your immune system. It can help your sleep, actually, quite a bit, so just be careful there. <laughs> Helps control and maintain your weight. Um, it can also help and build, maintain healthy bones, muscles, and joints, so I know you might live longer from this, so just know that. Um, so yeah, it increases longevity, reduces your resting heart rate, you might feel a little bit more relaxed than you did before. So I just want you to be aware of these side effects. Yeah. <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> okay, so I thought one of, one of the funniest punchlines I heard in a while was actually from a presentation at this seminar, uh, this workshop. And for a long time in the fitness industry, we have been warning people, you know, please consult a doctor before using um, a treadmill. Have you seen that before, been told that before? Mm -hmm. But really, the body was designed to move. We can all, at the very least, walk or, or get on a new step or move, right? So, so what we're starting to see now in the field is they might say, please consult a doctor <laughs> before using this. <laughs> Okay, but it's hard. Okay, yeah, maybe it's easy. Maybe, maybe there's not much time involved. Maybe I can do high intensity, but uh, it's hard. I don't feel like it. Motivation. Motivation. You nailed it. So let's define hard for a moment. I have a video I, I like to show. Um, and, you know, hard has its own definitions for different people, but maybe sometimes watching others can be inspiring and motivating. So I have a video of a... So have any of you ever heard of a father-son duo, Team Hoyt? No? No, father-son. Okay. <laughs> oh, no internet connection. That's why it's not fun.
if I can find out what's happening, but I, I'll, I'll give you this calendar to start brainstorming ideas back home. Um, just for now, focus on the one that says cardio. Tomorrow we'll focus on strength, and Wednesday we'll do flexibility. Um, but just think about ways that you can incorporate activity, move, move more movements. When can you get a higher intensity? When can it be more leisurely? Um, think about your work schedule, family schedule, what, whatever is in your life. How can you work around that to get in activity? based on what we talked about today. So I'll be right back. I'm going to see if I can figure out this internet thing. Okay. Do you mind if I fill